All right, welcome everyone. I'm Rajneesh Gupta, and with me I have Jamin Pathak. And this is a mock interview series for security analysts and SOC analysts. Okay, so uh, I, I believe you are already about, aware about the process. But before we go ahead, make sure you subscribe the channel. If you are an existing subscriber, make sure you press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we publish a new video. So without taking much time, let's get started. So hi, Jamin. How are you? I'm good, Rajnish. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for having me here, Jamin. Yeah. So Rajnish, uh, today my question is on Splunk. Okay. First question is, what is your exp experience working with Splunk? Sure. I mean, I work pretty much with Splunk. Uh, I worked in the production and even in my home lab as well. So I, uh, I have tried their whole, you know, uh, free trial for 60 days. I stall in my personal home lab and even I worked in the company as well. So I worked in uh, installing Splunk universal forwarder on Windows and Linux servers, collected, uh, you know, logs onto this Splunk, uh, different data type, data sources. Uh, I've worked in creating different custom dashboard and uh, shared with my team members and my manager as well. Uh, I, I even worked in collecting logs from different data sources or uh, from, from IDS solution like Suricata, IDS, Snot. Uh, I worked with Snot in my earlier company, but I worked with Suricata in my current project. I worked with collecting logs from Windows Sysmon. Uh, from Palo Alto firewalls, from Fortinet firewalls, from Zscaler proxy solutions as well. And of course, the regular Windows event log, audit D logs from Red Hat and Linux servers as well. I I, I majorly, uh, as, as, as a part of my daily routine, I work whenever, let's say, we have to find some indicator of compromise or perform the investigation. Maybe my I get a task to find out if, you know, someone tried accessing some unauthorized data or unauthorized information. What was happened during that time? What other file uh, he or she tried accessing into? Um, you know, uh, uh, where the data being shared and uh, everything related to it. Or it could be as simple as creating a, a dashboard of data related to a specific. CIDR or IP address block where I I worked in creating a dashboard related to a specific lookup table where I upload the subnets and whatever traffic matches that IP address or that subnet will will fall under that dashboard itself. I even worked in finding out different traffic patterns by running queries and correlation rules using different search commands related to uh, you know different source type, uh, even some transform commands and uh, table command, top command, uh, statistics command, removing some uh, duplicate entries by DW commands as well. Uh, so yeah, this is this is what I've worked with other than, you know, utilizing different, uh, I also worked in utilizing different Splunk apps, uh, you know, integrating them into the network uh, and uh, utilizing uh, Splunk security essential apps. So, you know, uh, creating, uh, utilizing different use cases, and even utilizing MITRE ATT&CK TTPs, mapping those with different events, uh, with different rules as well in the network. And uh, yeah, so yeah, work pretty much with it. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. So, are you familiar with the correlation rules in Splunk? Yes, I'm. I'm familiar with it. Yeah. So what is correlation rule in Splunk and have, have you created any? Yeah, I mean, uh, correlation rules is like, a, you know, uh, rules, I mean, uh, it's define a condition. If that condition conditions uh, met, then it will trigger an alert. And then we can start our investigation. So it's like uh, any other rules, uh, uh, if that rule, uh, the condition has been met, then uh, it will trigger an alert. So, um, uh, I, I recently created a correlation rule where we wanted to where we wanted to collect every alert. If uh, alert an alert when the uh, when command prompt or execute uh, any uh, any application. So if uh, 
through command line any application is been executed or attempted then uh, attempted then it should trigger an alert so for for that to work i utilize sysmon uh, sysmon event and uh, we use sysmon uh, event id 1 which was uh, I, I, event id 1 basically which was related to the process creation so we wanted to we started with the a few application which could be triggered like winbirds uh, powerpoint uh, excel as well so i i you know i created uh, i i use the source type uh, uh, event log microsoft sysmon and then i added a filter uh, added the event id one as well and then defined the event description process name of the process as well with the different or conditions logical or condition that's where i added process uh, winwords.exe excel.exe powerpoint.exe and then i added different fields to it um, to verify if, if there's any condition available so i wanted to fetch the fields related to process the parent process name the time and host and uh, yeah so that, that's how i started creating creating that rule into the network and uh, i tested that as well so if uh, th uh, if those applications were opened up or uh, called through the command prompt, it should trigger an alert. And I also verified that on Splunk. So yeah, that was one of the latest correlation rule that I created. So yeah. Okay, got it. Uh -huh. So Rajesh, you told earlier that uh, you work with the Splunk applications, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So what is your experience with the Splunk application? So yes, yeah, Splunk app is like in, uh, you know, it's an additional package. It's like uh, we have marketplace, right? So even we have app store, play store, right? So we can uh, we can install a third party application on our mobile phone, right? So with Splunk also, we have a marketplace where we can install any uh, additional package to enhance the detection capability or maybe it's uh, to enhance the visualization uh, when we create a dashboard so th there are different uh, apps available i work with uh, security uh, security um, that says plunk security essentials and i also work with the enterprise security uh, i work with suricata uh, i even work with the microsoft sysmon uh, even work with the sa investigator for enterprise security Palo Alto network add-ons uh, for Splunk. Um, yeah, and even work with the OS query as well. So these are some of the popular ones that I work with. So, yeah. Great. Great, Anish. Okay. So, yeah, this is all I have for today. Right. So thank you so much, Jamin. Uh, well, yeah. guys, now it's time for some quick, uh, or I would say, We'll do something else. Uh, uh, we'll go with some detailed explanation about uh, different security content on Splunk. So let me share my screen quickly. And uh, here we go. Perfect. So this uh, you can note down this URL. This is research.splunk.com slash categories slash endpoint. Or you can just be on the security content. So OK. So on the security content, you have detection, analytical, analytic stories, and playbooks. So if you go to detection, it's basically give you all the rules to detect every types or uh, every type of threats, or uh, you know different tactics uh, for different types of endpoints, uh, data models, and products as well. For example. I can look at all the correlation rules or the rules that I can build or detection capability that I can build for endpoint. For the endpoint, I have different, let's say this is the attempt to delete service. So I can open this and this will give me a search query. So I can find out if I have such kind of uh, any any logs related to this kind of approach, okay? So this is like if anybody is trying to, uh, attempting to delete a service, we should get an alert. So the following analytic uh, identities, Windows Service Control attempting to delete service. So this is part of TTP, and this is the name of the author. You can also look at the attack metrics. 
This is the attack matrix and what kind of uh, technique ID is being used. And yeah, so uh, nest framework as well. Similarly, um, we can also look at different playbooks. Okay, so playbooks are also mentioned here. Uh, you can look at the response, use case, credential. This is like ethnic ca categories, and this is SOAR app as well. SOAR is security automation. Um, so if we let's go, let, let's look at the phishing use cases. Okay, so I'll look at uh, uh, D. Uh, let's use this one: Cisco Umbrella DNS. Uh, denial listing. Okay, so this is like Cisco Umbrella is the malware uh, prevention tool uh, for remote desktop or remote system. So, so in order to detect these, uh, or this is like a playbook. So this is this gives you what happened if the alert comes in. So this playbook start with this start input URL block domain and then the incident response and the actions as well. So this is like entire playbook what all steps that you would take if this happened so this is the part of splunk soul okay so starting with the alert what all action could you take it all happened here so let's say your your system get compromised with the dns denial listing okay i mean it's, it's basically a part technique okay so it's basically a technique used to defend the network so what you can do is you once the system has been infected uh, in the url then you can block the domain, isolate the machine, and everything. So this is like an entire playbook of incident response, OK? And then we have analytic uh, stories as well, which gives you best practices, account compromise, abuse, and everything. Uh, I would suggest you to go through the detection. And um, this is where you mm -hmm. will go. Uh, you can look at different tactics uh, of MITRE attack. And this will be very helpful if you see when uh anomalies uh or maybe um let's say let's say we go to aws uh exfiltration via batch service okay so this is exfiltration this is data collection technique so in order to detect such kind of uh attacks or techniques you can use this query in the network okay even name job created then stats then these are uh, the you can run the entire splunk query in the system and you can find out if this is being attempted or not if somebody is trying to exfiltrate the data from the aws network to their own command and control center so this is possible by using this so i suggest before you even go for the interview go through some Splunk use cases and some uh, Splunk detection technique. Try to try to cover one or two so that you can discuss during the interview and tell them about it. For example, the one which I, which was very popular is discovery tactics. So cover a few tactics from the discovery stage. And uh, just like this, um, Windows common, uh, some common abused command shell risk behavior uh, and don't just read it uh, make sure you understand it as well make use of chat gpt or search anywhere in the internet and just try to get you know understanding about what is the discussion the detection sorry is about system user discovery with who am i okay this who am i is a command to know who who's the user is okay so we can use this detection capability. And this belongs to this attack technique ID, which is 1033, system owner and user discovery. So I, I highly suggest you cover few tactics because every tactics has multiple techniques. So don't try to cover entire MITRE attack. Cover at least few tactics, uh, discovery, execution, and exfiltration. These these three, just, just be sure about uh, these tactics and even in that tactics only cover one or two techniques okay and then be confident about it when you answer them during the interview all right so i hope this was useful for you we'll catch you in the next video this is me rajneesh with jevin padak bye for now